What I'm grateful to my parents is that they never thopoed their dreams on us. They just gave up after my brother. <laughs> because he put them through so much, they said, Let, forget it. It can't be as wild as he was. If he only sees her or my mom or the cook yes. in the in the kitchen and doesn't see me, yeah. for him it will be an abnormal thing, right? Like, why is a guy cooking? You allow the first child to look after the second child, so the first child also becomes a little paternal or maternal. Then if you have a third child, which is me, then you talk about the second child somehow getting lost in the middle. Mm. And the third child has to rely very much on their charm and personality to be noticed, which is why I think I'm so charming. <laughs> I realized that I must not be the only mother who would have completely forgotten their husbands when they became mothers. One life ends, I think, when before you're a parent and a new life starts. Things don't change. It's a yeah. completely different life. Now that my daughter is six, I can look back. Hello, welcome to another exciting episode of Tiffin Break by Little Joyce. Today, we have a very special guest with us. Someone who you would have definitely seen over the years, either as a writer or as an actress, or more recently as a parent as well. Please welcome Soha Ali Khan. Thank you so much. You know, Soha, since we've launched Little Joyce more than a year back, we've worked together a couple of times, yes. uh, more specifically around the nutritional products that uh, we launched. And when we launched the, the business, uh, you know, I used to ask this question to a lot of folks that who is the right person to talk about our products? Right. And somehow a lot of women that I spoke to uh, really epitomized and said, if I look at Soha, that's the kind of mom I want to be. Really? Wow. Yes. And that's why, you know, you were the first call that, that we made back then. And it's been wonderful working with you over the last year or so across. Oh, well, I'm products. very grateful to all those women who spoke up. And I've really enjoyed my association with Little Joyce because I do think that, you know, you, of course, along the way as an actor, associate with many brands. But the ones that you actually use in your daily life, and you'll know this because I constantly reach out to your team, asking them to send more and more products. Those are the ones you can be truly passionate about. Yeah. No, I think it's been it's been a truly fabulous experience. But mm. here today we are here to talk about a different aspect uh, of the platform. Yes. Apart from the nutritional products that we sort of offer uh, for children's physical and mental development, reducing the anxiety around parenting, we realize that a lot of anxiety is more mental or more in our minds was actually what manifests uh, in different situations. Sure. And we've realized over time that we need to sort of be that coach to parents uh, and help them along the journey. Right. And that's where we launched Tiffin Break to just have everyday conversations around uh, parenting with different individuals who have different styles of parenting. And right. there's no right or wrong in that sense. Right? right. And you've been very, very vocal about this as well. So we thought, you know, after having worked with you extensively about uh, on the supplements, we should definitely understand a little deeper uh, on your journey as a parent as well. Sure. Before we get to there, would love to understand a little about how your childhood was. I think there's, you know, if I, if I look at the lineage, there's the sports, there's uh, film, um, there's writing, yes. uh, literature. There is so much uh, that you would have got exposed to in yes. your childhood. Would you be able to sort of throw a little light as to what did you really enjoy about your childhood and what were some aspects that you did not really? Um, I have happy memories of my childhood. Um, I, of course, people know my parents very well uh, and they will see them as superstars in their own rights, really excelled in their chosen fields. And those fields were not quote unquote academic. Yeah. Uh, what I'm grateful to my parents is that they never thopoed their dreams on us. In fact, there was no expectation at all. I think once you've achieved excellence in your own field, you relax a little bit, you know. My father captained India for 10 years and then he was, he would retire and he was at home. And he was the at-home parent while my mother continued to work. So uh, firstly, as a child, my vision of parenting was my mother going out to work and my father being at home. That's not to say he attended every school function. Uh, he was also absent a lot. Uh, he didn't really, I think, probably enjoy uh, coming to school as much as a lot of our parents go to school. I think in that generation, there was no... Uh, not so much guilt as we feel today, perhaps. They just did what they wanted to, they didn't do what they wanted to, they delegated what they needed to, and there was a community of people. You know, I grew up in a house with my, gra it was my grandmother's house, there were cousins, people coming and going. It was not the sort of nuclear family that we have right now. 
Um, and I, I have happy memories, lots of playing outdoors, not at all aware of what an AQI was, you know, um, playing sports, uh, being encouraged to do whatever it is that I wanted to do, never being forced to read or study, but I naturally had an academic inclination. Um, and I wanted to study, I wanted to go to Oxford, I wanted to do my masters, and that was encouraged, but it was sort of in a, done in a very, you know, I think it's very difficult to parents. So I don't know how they did it, but I think they did more or less the right things, such that I felt that I had enough of a say in my life, but they were also strict about certain rules. Now, everyone has different rules, but I feel like my parents were slightly more lenient than other children in our class. So for example, if we went out late, a bunch of girls would come and stay the night at my house because my curfew was later than others. This also has a little bit to do with that, the fact that I was the third child. Interesting. So they were more lenient with you compared to your... I think siblings? they just gave up after my brother. <laughs> because he put them through so much, so they much. said, Let, forget it. <laughs> Discipline doesn't work, rules don't work. Let's just cross our fingers and hope for the best. And you know, yeah. it, can't be, it can't be as wild as he was. Interesting. Interesting. Did it... Uh, did, because... When you looked at him, and you obviously both of you grew up together, I'm sure there would be a lot of influence of his childhood on you as well, right? Like when you're saying that, um, you know, they gave up because of his mischief and uh, they couldn't sort of control what he did. Yes. Um, wouldn't that give you also, and they were lenient with you. I mean, if I took one plus one could become three as well, right? Yes. You could have taken advantage of Correct. that and really had a Correct. gala time. Correct. But you didn't. You yeah. were sincere and hardworking and, and just focused on what you wanted to yes. achieve. Yes. Um, so there's always this aspect of nature versus nurture, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there is a, a natural acumen for excellence in the family that sort of runs through you. But if I look at the nurturing aspect, you know, having a good time, I'm sure all the friends back in school said, hey, you are lucky, you have a curfew which is later. Sure. Um, did you ever think that, you know, how did I make the wise decisions back then and not take advantage of that? I think, you know, you talk about nature versus nurture and it's true, but it's, you know, even when you're a parent to three children, you're not always the same parent to all three children. So I think that actually their parenting uh, techniques, I was going to say tactics, but techniques is less loaded, um, was different with my brother. Also with your first child, I think you're still sort of figuring it out. Um, they probably perfected a few things when it came to me, which is why I'm so amazing, I think. Um, <laughs> but they struck the right balance between being involved and yet allowing me the freedom to make my own choices. And as a result, I did push the envelope a little bit like I bunked in economics class or perhaps, you know, made the wrong choice of my special friends, you know, and they were like, mm, but there was never sort of like you're forbidden from doing this or you absolutely cannot do that because perhaps they felt that I might rebel more mm. um, and they didn't want that to happen. So I think that I was also respectful of the fact that they're giving me the independence and obviously there must have been something within me that appreciated that and responded to that because you can't use the same technique with every child. You have to see what they respond to. Yeah. And I responded to uh, being given that independence it's it's interesting you say that right like i have seen my parents uh behave very differently with my elder brother yeah. compared to me uh and i see that wherever so i only one son but uh, i see that a lot between the siblings right they're always comparing as to the different parenting styles Absolutely. that they've been through um maybe you're right maybe parents just get the hang of it like it's like running a startup right you you <laughs> you don't do the perfect thing, but you learn from your mistakes and you're like, okay, let's... let's uh, yes. And I, they, I really believe in child order, you know, somehow determining your personality. Like they say the firstborn child has a... So, because you would sort of give them all the little joys gummies and, you know, sugar-free this and all the classes and they'll learn chess and they'll learn Spanish and it's your first child. And then the second child, you know, maybe a little bit less because you're more relaxed and you allow the first child to look after the second child. So the first child also becomes a little paternal or maternal. And then if you have a third child, which is me, then you talk about the second child somehow getting lost in the middle. Mm. And the third child has to rely very much on their charm and personality to be noticed, which is why I think I'm so charming. <laughs> no, quite, <laughs> quite possible. Like, uh, you know, a lot of folks who I see today as adults, or if I see a lot of children, I've sort of, ever since you have launched this platform, I've started noticing behavior of children even more closely. Yes. I think the, the impact that, you know, if you have to work towards something at a younger age, like you just mentioned, right, if you want to be noticed, you have to be a little bit more charming. Yeah. 
uh, I changed, I think, seven schools wow. from first to twelfth. Wow. And every two years, I would have to figure out how to make new friends. Right. In different languages. Right. In different, like it was CBSE board, you know, ICSE board, etc. And somehow, I think the brain just develops in that order, right? Because right. it's almost like a survival instinct. Right. You can't. It's most children can't stay alone on the corner, right? They want company. Yes. And uh, I think those sort of, while it may have been a little hard back then, I, I I can't fathom how hard it must have been. It just came naturally, right. I guess. But over a period of time, I think that's a skill set that you develop, whether sure. it's uh, whether it's charm or ability to get noticed or going into a room and sort of being very friend friendly with everyone. Trying to make friends. Yes. Um, to the extent that people were shocked that I'm an introvert, as per the all the Myers Briggs and everything, and right. they're like, "We can't believe that you're an introvert." I said, "Maybe it's a it's a defense mechanism, right? right. Because all my life I've been thrown into situations right. where everything is unknown, and you have to just uh, start making friends." Yes. Um, but if you thought about this so much, why not, if I may ask, have a second child? I think because honestly, I had my first child quite late. I was 38 when we had Anaya. And we we have always operated when I say we I talk about Kunal and me on instinct. You know, we never haven't planned anything. You know, I myself have been quite impulsive through my life, even though I'm a planner. When it comes to the important decisions, I've been quite impulsive in terms of who to marry, when to marry, when to have a child, uh, etc. And I don't know honestly. I think now if I is it too late to have a second child? It possibly is. Um, you know, these are things I think about now. And what I am is someone who goes with the flow and accepts whatever life throws at me. Luckily, it's all been more or less very good and things that I've enjoyed. But whatever happens, I get on board pretty, pretty quickly. That's a, that's so a great So at the moment, we have one child. I think it's probably going to be like that. And you know, I think that that's a situation that I embrace and I enjoy and I do my best at. Yeah. You know, if we were to have two children, uh, then I would have probably done that as well. Kunal said, uh, you became very crazy when you became a mother. <laughs> and I did not enjoy that at all. Okay. And uh, initially, I didn't understand that. And now in hindsight, I'm very sympathetic to him. Um, and suddenly aware of the fact that seeing things from his perspective, he must have felt completely abandoned by me. You know, and I, I realized that I must not be the only mother who would have completely forgotten their husbands when they became mothers. Oh, no, I think it's uh, it's even the <laughs> other way around. I mean, I get enough abuse from my wife that I've not supported her enough during right. pregnancy or for the first couple of years when it's the hardest, as right. when there's no feedback loops, right? you have no clue what you're doing. Right. Um, and in fact, we did discuss about, but if you see my, if you meet my son, and I think it's harder for folks, and I've discussed this a lot with people, uh, I think the amount of mischief or Maybe we are not good parents, but this, this is such a handful that we're like, boss, we can't manage two of these, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I mean, kudos to actually your parents that after Sef, they had you as well. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah. First, my I hope he doesn't mind. Me. No, no, <laughs> yeah, I, no, he doesn't mind. <laughs> He's happy I'm around. <laughs> Excellent. But uh, that's an interesting point that you mentioned, right? The, the relationship between husband and wife after a child comes into picture. Uh, We've actually, uh, on the platform, got a lot of questions around parenting and children, but there are now emerging questions around uh, the relationship between husband and wife as yes. such, right? To an extent where, like, till date, when my son's eight, and we have tried really hard, right? But he either sleeps with me or with her, mm. right? And and we don't want to just crowd the same bed. Like, no, you have to sleep independently. There's a bunk bed. There's everything all done. All the shaman that you can think of. Right. Uh, but... It's just that he's so close. Yeah. Uh, like if me and my wife hug, he will come running and just separate <laughs> us and he will want to, you know, hug right. one of us, right? right. Whoever he's in more than love with at that point. Right. Of but it's an interesting uh, dynamic that's not spoken about enough no. as such. No. Uh, especially if you look at the, uh, the fact that the pregnancy as well as post-pregnancy, the first couple of years, I think it's almost like a two, three year period where for you, everything would have been about Inaya. Yeah, I would say even more than two or three years because I did actually lose myself completely in motherhood. Also because I'm quite obsessive when it comes to any, uh, for lack of a better word, tasks. Like if I have a project on hand, then that is all, you know, they say women are good at multitasking. But I think I like to do, I can do a number of things, but I generally devote most of my passions to one thing. And when I became a mother, of course, uh, you, you, you give birth to a child and then it's, so fascinating to see how 
uh, much of an influence you have on this little thing and how much you can shape them and you can go power crazy and just be like, oh, wow, I have this like thing that I can make into anything that I want and they will listen to me and they're so dependent on me. And uh, it's, it's, it changes you, it changes your relationship with your husband, it you know, changes your friendships. Uh, it really, one life ends, I think, when before you're a parent and a, n a new life starts. Things don't change. It's a yeah. completely different life. And I think you have to, it's very difficult to be self-aware at that point. Now that my daughter is six, I can look back. And I think I would have done a lot of things differently, but maybe I wouldn't because maybe I needed to have that journey as well. Maybe I needed to go through that journey to have the wisdom now to say, oh, I would have done things differently. Um, but one thing I'm glad of, um, and Kunal less so, is that Anaya has never, ever spent a night in our bed in Mumbai. Wow. Not once. Um, you know, How did you manage that? You need to give me tips. Yeah, I keep saying every time I say this, you know, tonight she's going to come to our bed. So just don't tell people this because <laughs> and that'll be the end of it. No, no, I'm sure every parent is going to write to you saying, please give us the tips. for. <laughs> no, I also feel that everyone says, you know, this is the time to hold them. You know, she's a girl. She's going to be 10 soon. She's going to be slamming a door in your face and, you know, locking her door. This is the time where you want her in your bed. You know, this time yeah. is never going to come back. So there's always, there's always the grass there's always is always the flip side, side to everything. But now we go on holiday and the first night we slept in the same bed, in I and me, was this summer, last summer. We spent the whole night and I was terrified. I was really terrified of like, because I'm a very light sleeper. I was like, will I be able to sleep? You know, how will I know if she needs to pee or not? Because, you know, uh, like, I don't know. Uh, do I have to wake her up? Will she wake up and tell me? What if she forgets? And et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it was fine. You know, she in fact lay there and she said, this is the best moment in my life <laughs> and I was like and I felt so guilty I was like what a horrible mother I am that I've kept her away from my bed for so long um, and then of course very soon by the middle of the night when she was sleeping you know I'm sure she's and, like turned and we were around falling and out of the bed and I was like oh god I want to go back to Bobby so you know it's a happy balance now when we go yeah. on holiday then we sleep in the same bed um, and uh, when we're in Bombay she knows that she has to sleep in her own bed. Yeah. Everything is a phase, room. nothing lasts forever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even when uh, I used to say, oh, she constantly has a blocked nose and Dr. Merchant was our doctor at that point and he said, you know, what am I... He said, enjoy it. Enjoy everything because nothing lasts forever. Everything is passing. At some point in your life, her having a blocked nose is going to be the least of your troubles when it comes to being a parent. Uh, and it's already like that, you know. So he said, just try and be in the moment and in, really try and see, um, you know, instead of letting it get you down, you know, I think his words were enjoy the moment. I was like, how can I enjoy the fact that she has a virus? Yeah. And he said, just try and understand that this is passing and it's not going to last forever. And I think that really helped me get through a lot of the challenging phases of parenting. To just know that even when they're having um, sleep regression, even when they have a temperature, even when they have a cough that seems like it's lasting forever, that things will pass. Uh, and, you know, they do go through these phases, especially in the first two, three, four yeah. years. Um, so that, just that knowledge that this is not going to be forever and I'm not going to be underslept forever um, really helps you, I think, to get through more troublesome periods. Absolutely. Tell me this, you, you've spoken a little about the fact that in the first two, three years you were uh, very serious about motherhood and you went all in in some ways. You, you didn't spend much time with family, with friends. Uh, is that where the writing aspect came about? The writing aspect came when I was pregnant. Okay. Um, when it was difficult to get a lot of roles when you're heavily pregnant. And I managed to get the book done in about six months. And it sort of, the release coincided with, I think she was two months when the book came out. So it would have been tough to do it when, in the first three years. Because at that point, I was finding it difficult to do anything else, you know. Interesting. But you then wrote more about parenting as well or situations that you would find yourself in some way or at least in some ways what you saw with your daughter or what you experienced as a, as a mother. Yes. Uh, was that well thought through or did it just come on the fly that you just said, hey, I, anyway, I enjoyed writing, let me just write more about these experiences. I mean, I would say that there was, I mean, it's not that they weren't thought through, but they were not as orchestrated as writing a, you know, yeah. a full length book. Yeah. Um, and, you know, these are things that, uh, I find myself thinking about a lot, connecting with, you know, uh, parents a lot. And I feel also if you don't write things down, you forget because these moments pass. And then, you know, you really, like, at least I struggle to remember a lot of things that have happened five years ago. So if you, do, if you write them down, it's good documentation as well. And have you tried to inculcate that habit in Naya as well? 
I try. And if I ask her, Ina, what are your favorite things to do? Um, my favorite things, I, I want her to say, I love to read, I love to play the piano. And she says, ice cream, watching TV and shopping. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> this is just, I'm a failure. Everything that I've tried to achieve, you know. And then, um, but she, you know, she has this twinkle in her eye and I think, I think she's doing it to annoy me. But also she's genuinely like, I think loves ice cream. Uh, and then she'll say, no, I love you more, most days. But, um, you know, it's, you can't, as I said, you can't force a child to be what you want them to be. I, if she's not going to be a reader, even though I was like, how can my child not read books? If she's not going to be a reader, she's not. If she's bright, you know, I think she has great potential. She writes very well for her age. She reads very well for her age. She's smart. Um, one thing that she struggles with, for example, is speaking up in school. So she, I don't know what the right word is, whether she um, has stage fright or she lacks the confidence. Uh, at home, she's like a pataka and in front of the people she's comfortable with, she's very articulate, too expressive, I would say. But uh, in front of a group of people, she's finding her feet and I'm seeing there's already a change. So currently, I'm not saying this is her personality, but currently she's, her challenge is speaking up. And um, I tried to press her and then I realized, just let it be. When she's ready, she will. And she communicates. She communicates through drawing. She communicates through writing. At some point, maybe she will find the ability to speak through using her words. Um, and uh, if she does, she does. If she doesn't, she'll, she'll figure it out. And that is my struggle as a parent. Yeah, I, think I say it very easily now, but it's genuinely a struggle not to try and handhold her through these things. Yeah, I think this is the, this is the common confirmation bias I see most of us parents having. We don't recall everything that happened in our childhood, but we recall some of the elements that, yeah, we used to read books, whether it was Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> or even before that, it was Twinkle or, you know, yeah. voracious reader. But we didn't have anything else to exactly. do. Like, I still remember the, <laughs> the only pastime in a summer vacation was to get a library yeah. uh, and used to go. Yes. And the, the library used to scold us because it was one book a day and we would finish it in the first half, go back yeah. in the evening and saying, no, no, I am bored, I need something else. Right. But our kids have so much in front of them yes. that they are spoiled for choices. Absolutely. And therefore, I think the eventually they will all get to learn what we learn. But it's yes. just that the timing would be different. Yes. And I know I say it very matter of factly, but I struggle with the same thing, yeah. right? Like, I mean, when he joined school, it was compulsory cursive handwriting. And I mean, I can't tell you how bad his handwriting was. Right? <laughs> And we used to struggle getting him to sit in one place. And and I still remember, like, my mom is a teacher. Uh, I never had to go for tuitions. <laughs> and... Uh, but your mom was teaching you? Uh, no, she couldn't teach me. No. She was like, tu bad tha hai nitha. Which is the common thing with boys, right? Yeah. We don't, like, our moms love us so much that we're spoiled. Right. That, because, right. and I see that with him also. He gets away with anything, right? right? Um, so I just told him, why don't you send him to someone and he'll sit there. Right? Right. It's just that the home environment is over pampering. No, no, and also the authority of a non-parent, a teacher has far more authority yeah. than a mother. So it was very bad that my mom would be like, I have been a teacher. You know, you <laughs> first standard, you don't have to tuition. Me I'm like, it's just the situation, right? If he's yes. not going to sit with us, we need yes. to solve the problem. And let someone else solve the yes. problem, right? In that sense. And I think the objectivity gets a little lost because it's a very emotional journey yes. for grandparents as well, right? Uh, because they have a very different recollection of oh, how yes, we absolutely, grew up. Absolutely. Um, and that's the hard thing that me and my wife, almost every week we have some learning that we write down and saying that we lived our life differently. We need to make sure that we live our lives and enjoy our lives. And he will enjoy his life yes. in a way that he seems, he deems fit, right? Yes. And we can only mold a little bit of the environment. Yes. Most of it is not going to be in our country, yes. right? Um, you can choose the right schools. I mean, even the best of schools, what company he or she makes is not up to us, right? right. In that sense. Exactly. I don't know if it happened with you. Uh, you were a studious child. Yes. Uh, I was never very serious about it. Yes. So, the TV used to get picked up and put in the cupboard. <laughs> like the entire 10th standard, the cable tha, but the television itself was put across. And there right. was no Wi-Fi and stuff for you Correct. to access, right? There was no mobile phone yeah, at that course. point of time. Like my father used to lock the... For us, it was telephones because I used to talk to Priyanka, who was my best friend, for three hours a day after spending eight hours in school with her. And my father used to say, what, you spent all day in school with her, what can you possibly have to say to her? <laughs> so in the evening, you used to like, put a tala Locked on it. The phone. So we couldn't access the phone. Yeah, hard to do that today, right? No, hard to do So it. how do you 
sort of manage? So firstly, my child is only six. At this point, she's still, she can figure out, for, of course, conveniently, she knows how to turn on the TV. She does not have to turn off the TV. Um, it's, uh, not something like, she needs to learn. I don't know, it just went on and on and on. And I'm like, you know, it's the same button. You just yeah. have to press it. Oh, it just went on. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So um, at this point, she still is not navigating a lot of her entertainment herself. She's still, I'm putting it, um, she'll be like, choose it for me. And then she can do it, but you know, she knows that she's allowed to watch. We, firstly, she's aware of the rules. She understands that screen time is something that is uh, good in small doses, that it is um, something, and she gets to choose what she wants to watch. It's not like I'll say, oh, now you have to watch something that's educational because it is her screen time. So she can choose exactly what she wants to watch. On school days, it's about half an hour that she's allowed to watch. And on weekends, it also becomes only half an hour because she's actually doing a lot of things in the day. Um, I think the challenge is what do you do with them when they're not watching TV, number one. Because if they have something fun to do, if she's playing with a friend, if she is enjoying herself, she's not thinking about what she could be doing. But if she's bored, um, then she'll say, can I watch TV? And of course, she also enjoys watching TV. So it's, it's a little bit of both. So one is engaging them in a way that doesn't involve screens. And that involves a little more effort because it's very easy to put on a TV, leave it on. And I'm very sympathetic to that because I also know that I can get a lot done when I know she's watching TV, as opposed to setting up an activity which involves where is the glue, where are the scissors, now she's dropped the paint, now I have to clean it up, now she has to clean it up, I have to teach her to clean it up, it's gonna become a thing. Watching TV is very clean, yeah. very easy. But that's the choice you have to make. How important is it for you to set those rules. I really think that um, too much screen time is not a good thing. Uh, and I've seen the effects of that on myself, you know, how it affects my sleep, how it affects my energy levels, uh, how um, sometimes it puts me on edge, um, how it affects your eyes, all of these things. So of course, with one child, I want, to, I want her to be the best version of herself. So I've told her limited screen time is allowed. And at, the point, at this point, credit to her, she's very obedient also. She responds well. Up bigger, yeah. Um, ha, but yeah, definitely not on Kunal. Kunal. <laughs> definitely not on Kunal. But I feel like in the future, I'm not going to be there to enforce the rules all the time. Yeah. So how much of it has she absorbed? How much of the choices is she going to make herself? Like right now, we're talking about screen time. Um, you know, when it comes to, for example, something simple like plucking leaves. She understands plucking leaves is not a good thing. But I told her, I have friends who genuinely love the environment. And at case in point, always bring up the Amirza. I would say, whenever I'm talking about the environment, I say, my friend Dia, she, whether the teacher is watching or not, she will never pluck a leaf because she actually cares about that plant. So do you actually care about yourself? Do you care about your stomach? Do you care about your health? Do you care about your eyes? Because you have to know that if you love yourself, you need to get that exercise. You need to walk around. You need to eat the right food. You can't eat too much sugar. You shouldn't watch too much TV. It's not me telling you, you need to make those choices for yourself. And I would like to watch you turn off that TV yourself whenever you learn how to turn off a TV and, you know, make those choices. I don't want to have to run after you saying, ye mat khao, aise mat karo, because now you're six. And, you know, you're eating a lot of foods that I'm not even aware of. But in school, you know, for example, if she's given uh, a chocolate, she brings it home. She never eats it in school, even though I've told her, now you can. Uh, but so I think she's still, a lot of it is to impress me. I understand that also. Um, but whatever it is, she understands what is for the lack of a better word, what is right, what is wrong, what are good choices, what are poor choices. Sometimes she'll make the poor choice, but A, she knows the difference, which I think is important, and B, I'm trying to build in her a sense of loving herself and um, so that she makes those good choices for herself. We usually, I think most parents that I've spoken to, uh, talk about right or wrong. Yeah. There is always, like for example, results are success and failure. There's no just result. Yes. Uh, there is always a adjective yeah. used with any situation, right? So we have this compartmentalization technique where it's either or, or you know, and one labels, or the other. Yeah. There are labels and stuff yeah. like that, right? Um, so usually when we want to teach self-love, it's about it's bad for your health. If you do this, your health will be better, right? Why you should have more protein at the age of eight because you're playing so many sports. You need your physical development. You need to be able to run faster, jump longer, whatever it is, right? It doesn't work, mm. right? And therefore, I'm being very, very, uh, I'm very keen to understand when you, because specifically you said that this is something that you have a choice. Yes. And you should enjoy your screen time. 
but you should always be aware of what's good and not for you. You know, I think more than talking, this is something I learned from my father, is just teach by example. You live your life that you love and your children are sponges. They will absorb energies, they will watch you, they will see what you're doing. They will see that you're reading a book as opposed to watching TV, for example. They will see that, for example, she's learning gymnastics. Now, gymnastics is fun for a while, and it's one of the things that if you want to persevere at, it's not fun because it's discipline, it's painful. They stretch you to a point where it hurts. You feel sore the next day. The teachers also, like normal sports teachers, are not like your other IB teachers because they're old school, like, you know, you've got to do it like this. And she used to say, my gymnastics teachers are, are very strict. Um, and, you know, they don't let you go to the bathroom, for example. And I was like, I'm sure they'll let you. But if you're going to the bathroom 20 times, then they probably say, no, you don't need to go to the loo. So that was her example. But I said, um, firstly, uh, I said, you know, gymnastics, and you show, you read books like we read about Nadia Comaneci, and you said, you know, this is a proper gymnast. And she also had all these struggles, and then she got a gold medal. Now, your, your objective may not be to get a gold medal, but if you're learning gymnastics, firstly, this is something that I think uh, you should learn for these reasons. You will figure it out whether you want to persevere with it or not. I go to the gym. I'm not doing gymnastics, but I go to the gym. And there are many days that I don't want to go to the gym. And I will share with her that, you know, today I'm tired and I don't want to go to the gym. I would rather, you know, hang out with you or do this. But I'm going to put my shoes on and I'm going to get there. And I know when I get there and I, I'll, I'll feel differently. And when I come back, I'll feel amazing. Uh, and she watches me and she sees me do my workout. And during the lockdown, I actually has to work out in front of her because Mahesh, my trainer, used to come home. So she used to see, A, see, I don't want to do this. I'm doing this. I feel better. And then when she used to go to gymnastics with so much credibility, I could say to her, Inaya, you don't feel like going. But trust me, when you go, you'll feel differently. And she has that parallel in her head that I've seen this happen. And I also feel it within me. Similarly, when it comes to reading a book, you know, as opposed to my saying, read a book, read a book, read a book, because, you know, you'll, it's good for you um, and it's interesting and it expands your vocabulary and it, you know, unleashes your imagination, etc. She herself will watch me read a book and then will be drawn towards doing that. And of course, you can also, it's not always so, a lot of it is bribery and corruption. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying that, okay, you must, you must spend 20 minutes reading a book a day. I also do that. Sometimes you have to also carve it. But I think it's always... That's why I think parenting is so exhausting and I'm so happy at eight o'clock because my mind really starts to rest because I've negotiated and navigated and been the best version of myself and I've lost my temper and I've apologized to her and you know I've had so many discussions with her as to how she needs to handle relationships and I've really given so much of myself that I feel exhausted by the end of the day and why me time is so important. So I think self-love, practice by loving yourself firstly. It's interesting, while you were talking, I just realized now I get it why my wife keeps asking me to cook once in a while. Because yeah. she wants... Her to see him her son. To like you, you, you should learn to cook. Yes. And if he only sees her or my mom uh, or the cook yes. in the in the kitchen and doesn't see me, yeah. then how will it... Like he will not... He, for him, it will be an abnormal thing, right? Absolutely. Like why is a guy cooking? Absolutely. And Kunal, uh, for example, cooks is the only one who cooks in a house. And he loves cooking because also he has a different um, palate. He enjoys, and, and I was eating all the things I eat because traditionally women will take an interest in the diet and the bedtime. And that's what was happening. And he said, why is she not eating, you know, um, things that I enjoy? Like Kashmiri food, for example, that, you know, nobody in the house knows how to make. And he learned how to make dam aloo and rogan josh and yakni and these things. And uh, I said, I don't think she'd like eating it. And she loves it, you know. And also she adores him and she sees him going through the effort of making something for the two of them and they sit down and they eat it together and uh, she has no conception of like cooking is yeah. for someone again similar to me you know my mother was away often and my father was making decisions and you know um, being involved in school work and homework when it came to homework he would help me with the homework it's interesting though know, this is very similar to how money compounds everyone says that compounding is a ninth wonder in the world you have to let your money grow over yes. time. This is something like that. And you just keep doing, you be the best version of yourself every day. You make sure you put in the effort to not get distracted and say, no, this may not work. You just keep doing yeah. it. And 10 years later, you'll realize that because we did this, yes. you know, they absorbed, as, as you said, children are sponges. Yes. They absorbed it and they are now exhibiting that learning across. It's yeah. just that you don't get to see those, how we like to say, small wins every day. Right? Yeah. You're not, 
सरप्राइज एवरी डे अरे ये कर लिया करके इट जस्ट टेक्स अलॉट ऑफ टाइम यू नो इट्स इजी टू से एंड बी नॉट एवरीवनस लाइफ इज सो हैप्पी यू नो इट्स समटाइम्स इट्स टफ टू शो सेल्फ लव एंड टू शो यू नो एन एटमॉस्फेयर दैट यू वांट टू क्रिएट अ परफेक्शन where everyone is happy in the house so you know all of that everyone is going through their own stresses as well which is why it's very difficult to preach parenting you know it's very difficult to go into someone's house and tell them to be a certain way because you're not living their lives which is why i also think it's it's important to be easy on yourself as a parent and kunal and i have very different approaches to parenting um you know so and now in eyes aware that we're not on the same page at all times and that is a great opportunity for her to exploit sometimes but also it's also reality that he's a different person brought up by a different set of parents i'm a different person brought up by a different set of parents there is going to be some kind of clash uh, and not everyone has these discussions before they get married yeah. <laughs> uh, or as children you know even though maybe you should yeah. but um you know when you then have a child then it's like okay case in point the child should go to sleep when they're tired and they say i'm sleepy case in point no the child should go to sleep when i say it's time for the child to go to sleep because they will get into a habit and you need to wind them down and you need to dim the lights and you need to read a bedtime story yeah. and you know routines cetera, are cetera. important so i'm routine means like when she's sleepy she'll fall asleep anywhere you know so you have to yeah and everyone has a say he has a say correct uh, but if you and kunal have such different parenting styles don't you think that you know i will get confused nina is sharp she understands that we're individuals she knows who to go to for what um and uh, you know she'll figure it out um i think that she understands that both of us a adore her and want what's best for her uh and she now is getting to the point where she will watch if there's tension in the room where it's like coming to bedtime and kunal's like let us stay up for another hour and i'm like no there's school tomorrow and she'll watch this and <clears throat> she herself will choose her battles for her if she if she realizes this is not something i want to choose for example i'll save this for the popsicle battle yeah. <laughs> that's when i will you know and so for example she had a little bit of a cold yesterday and she won a gold medal at a gymnastics competition it's like her first competition yesterday and uh, we were very proud of her and kunal said you can have anything that you want and she immediately looked at me because what he's been not allowing her to have is another toy because he says you have too many toys and you need to learn that you can't buy everything so no more toys so she looked at him and said i want a toy and he was like he didn't he said no you can't have a toy because now now you're just exploiting the moment and then she looked at me and said i want a popsicle and i said no you have a cold, <laughs> cold. <laughs> so she's like like you said you i just can said have that i can have anything that i want yeah and we were both like sorry sorry we don't mean that you these are your options you can have more tv time you can have a later bedtime or something and she was like whatever i don't even you guys just figure it out by yourselves first so we luckily at that point where now we both we all laugh about the fact that we don't know what we're doing half the time yeah. that we are trying to be perfect parents we are not perfect parents and i she knows we're not perfect parents um you know and i have a current competition going on that whoever raises their voice five times we don't know what the consequence is going to be there'll be some consequence she chooses the consequence for me she says i know my consequence is i won't be able to watch tv for 3 days yeah. <laughs> so i have to change i have to change the consequence consequence oh, yeah. um and i don't know what she's going to punish me with but uh, at the moment i have already raised my voice 3 times this in a day uh, we started the competition yesterday <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so as soon as you hit 5 there's something yeah apparently okay that's a tough one yeah so i don't know these are not right or wrong well, i no, mean no. i think you know, so i'm saying that everyone is figuring your child is different your child will respond to things differently there's no steadfast rules of parenting i don't think yeah um and uh, when you're on different pages also diversity is good you know when it comes to grandparents for example i was very resistant of anybody else having an influence on her life i was so thankful there's a lockdown and no one's coming home because i can control this child completely and kunal said it's a terrible idea you must in, in and so did my mother you must expose her to different influences because you know she needs to absorb a little bit of everything, everything. diversity is important yeah i uh, i think uh, i think one of the aspects that we've realized uh is people have forgotten how to just enjoy parenting it's it's just become like a yes, task yes. right like you just said you there is a there's a way to behave around children so that they absorb the right yes. things and I mean, if you are on your phone all the time, that's yes. what they also crave, right? Uh, but there is a certain joy. I, I see you and Kunal on what you and you know, I have just you know this not screaming five times. Yeah. Just spice it up a little bit in yeah. some sense, right? Yeah. That's a great way to bring back joy into just it's like it's like engagement. Yes. It's just and she also sees her mother fail. 
I yeah. think understanding that you're going to fail is also important because you are going to fail in life and you're going to fall short of your own expectations. So whether it comes to a sport or whether it comes to anything, it's all right to make mistakes. It's all right to lose your temper. It's all right not to be the best version of yourself. It's important to apologize. I've apologized to her um, enough times. So she's also, she does struggle. You can see that uh, it's an ego task. Like uh, it's, it it's really challenges her ego to say sorry. You know, and we've read many books where we said the most important words are saying, thank you, I'm sorry, help me. These are the important words. I need help. You know, so she understands that. But to say, I'm sorry. Why do you think so? Is age pe, aapko aisa I don't know. Ki? Shayad, thoda aap thoda aap, <laughs> uh, uh, it's apparently difficult for me to say I'm sorry. I <laughs> genuinely feel I am not wrong often. And obviously no one in this room is going to contradict me because not if you know me. But uh, I genuinely feel I try so hard to do the right thing that if I you know, have offended you, if I've hurt you, then somewhere you must have done something yeah. <laughs> along the way. So I think she's got well, that. This happens. this happens with a lot of people who are... Uh, Amazing. I think it's fair enough. But I think if I could... and I, Not that I know you that well or I don't know you at all, but... Whatever you describe, it's almost like you have this innate pursuit of excellence in whatever you yeah. do. And when you go down that path, the bar is very high for everything. Yeah. Right? Everything that you do. It, it may be as mundane as just cooking dal. Sure. And it has to be perfect. Sure. Right? I think when you are that kind of personality, either by nature or nurture, somehow, I think that I think it's pride in your own yeah. work that comes in. I don't know if it's ego. Yeah. Uh, but there is a thin line between yes. the two. So I, I don't know if uh, you would be entirely wrong if others are still... Like, <laughs> you know, context clear. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, because you... I completely in, agree. But yeah. In your context, you're just doing... Like you're doing 101 out of 100. Yeah. Right? So you have not left anything in your life. Yeah. Uh, then if something goes wrong, then yeah. so be it, right? Yes. Like there's nothing to be sorry about. Yes. Because in your own mind, you have done 101. Yes. Right? You could you evaluated all possible things yes. to be done and you put in the extra effort. Yes. Then what do you have to be sorry about? Yes. Right? So I think that's something that's also a very thin line between um, that pursuit of... I've seen this in a lot of people who really pursue excellence. Yes. Uh, I have the same problem, actually. Yeah. Uh, very hard for me to say sorry. Yeah. Uh, I acknowledge... I feel bad. Yeah. Uh, sure. But somehow I'm like, yeah, but I did everything possible. Yeah. What do I have to be sorry about? Yeah. Uh, it's tough. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough thing. But it's a work in progress. <laughs> I'm sure. All of us are work in progress. Absolutely. Uh, forever in that sense. Right? Like I've seen my parents at 75 change so much. Like I used to keep thinking that there is a version because that's a version that we grew up with. Yeah. But to see them now also evolve into different roles, evolve their thinking. Right is quite interesting. Right. So I think that's the easiest way to know that you are always work in progress because if your parents at 75 are able to change their viewpoints, Absolutely. think differently about the same thing, then why that's are you true. so rigid, right, in that sense. And that's the comfort that I then get that, at least that's how I comfort my wife whenever there's a situation. And she's like, oh my God, this is a big problem. I'm like, relax. Yeah. It's he's eight years old. I'm sure by 10, like if you go back at six, there were different problems. Exactly. Now there are different problems. Exactly. Uh, We'll figure it out. You can't do something because someone else is doing it. All of us have had to deal with that in some way, perhaps some more than others. And even if you haven't, like Kunal is very clear. Mm. Um, because uh, if, as much as I might want to spoil her, he's very uh, anti that. And I'm, I'm very respectful of that. That both of us have to say yes to something, especially if it comes to like a, something lavish. Yeah. You know, I can't go over his head on that. We'll discuss it and say, okay. So I know in the future, many years down the line, when it comes to when is the right time to have a phone, for example. Uh, it's because not many years away. Max, five, six. I don't know. Max. Yeah, this 11-year-old boy came over the other day and he had a phone and she was like, he has a phone, mama. He has a phone. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you're not going to have a phone for a very long time. So I think it's know, hard to control beyond 12. It's hard 12. to control. Beyond 12, but it's, it's okay. almost impossible today. But it's okay. Like, she can cry. What will happen? She'll cry. She'll feel bad. She should not equate that with love. I hope she yeah. will not think my mother doesn't love me. Yeah. I wouldn't want to get to that place. But um, it's okay. I have to like be like, it's it's okay. Yeah. No, I think the two S's are killer, right? Screen and sugar. And you've spoken about screens. But the sugar problem, I think, is a lot more prevalent. Because um, I think one of the things is while we had access, I mean, there's a nice, like, this is something that I think we would have had. I don't know if you had, but I've had this when I was a, a yeah. young yeah. Uh, child. Yes. 
um, somehow we never got addicted to it because mm. the access wasn't so deep that you would just make a full meal out of it. Yeah. Um, I think it's gotten to an extent today where almost every meal is consisting of mostly sugar. Right. And uh, <clears throat> I think it's a it's a tough thing because especially for working parents yeah. to give uh, processed slash semi-processed food becomes uh, uh, an out and not all schools would have tiffins as yes. such. So I think the it's almost like compounding, right? Compounding works both ways. There is the good compounding, yeah, good habit compounding and there is a negative compounding sure. of these things as well. And uh, I think it's commendable how strict you are in terms of the sugar control as yeah. such. This it's is exactly. something that we feel is a massive epidemic coming in the next 20 years because we are so habituated. Like we got habituated a little later, maybe in our teens, maybe in our 20s. And we are able to then at least reverse that by, like for me, I could never do without two chais in a day. Yeah. Then it went to one chai, then it went to less sugar, less sugar, less sugar, became sugar free. Then it's coming, like you have to really work at it. But I crave sugar. I probably am a little addicted to sugar. I'm very disciplined when it comes to my food, but I have a slice of chocolate cake every single day. Like every single day to date. And when I was younger, I used to have it whole. Now I have a gluten-free vegan chocolate cake. Uh, and I work out and I have it at the right time so my blood sugar doesn't spike. I have it after my lunch. I don't have it at night. So I've made all those choices because it's also about when you have the sugar, not yeah. just the fact that you're eating yeah. sugar. Um, and uh, now I'm self-aware and I love myself, so I do that. But uh, when I was young, I used to have a bar of chocolate every single day, uh, like a big bar. Even when I was in college, when I was 18, 19, 20, a mega Twix every single day, wow. cheese sandwich and a Diet Coke. Like that was my lunch every day. So, uh, and what was your favorite tabba? My favorite? No. Favorite tiffin. What oh. you used to get in tiffin in school? I used to, when I was young, I had weird choices. Like I used to love ketchup on bread. Like just ketchup sandwiches. And makhan roti chini. Ah, that's a very standard yeah, thing. Yeah, which I, I give Inaya sometimes now also. Huh? But like with good. <laughs> um, and But you see, like my husband is totally different from me. Acha? He'll be like the person who's like, let her, let her. Khane do. This is bachpan. Abhi nahi khaegi to kab khaegi. And he has not, doesn't have a sweet tooth. Acha. He and like. He doesn't understand the addiction actually. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe if you just give them so much that they like, I don't know. It's like, what is that? Aversion therapy or something. Maybe he was like had so ah, much. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it works. Like either. I've seen my father at 75. He's been advised not to do, but he will still finish his meal with the bundi ka ladu. Like like ghee mein bana hai, sab chalta hai. Yeah. So I think it's hard. It's hard. It's very hard. Like I, I have myself had a very very sweet tooth. For me, it's taken like a more than a year to just even control. I think 70% of the gravy. Yeah. I still have some way to. And now at least we have choices. Correct. We have choices in the market that give you like sugar free healthy sugar options. Yeah. We have enough knowledge and information as to how to balance our blood sugar, you know, what to do to wind down, etc. So, you know, it's good to have that and to apply that. Yeah. So there's a section that we always do where we uh, surprise our guests. Oh my God. With something with a that, that's too uh, funny. With a, with a, well, that, that's why the show is called Tiffin Break. Um, <laughs> usually, we make sure that we get something that they really enjoyed in their childhood. Uh, I hope think. you've not given me ketchup or no. No, we have oh, got you what you enjoyed today. Right now, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is this is true. I have actually. I'm very. So you want me to eat it now? You can at least. Of course, I'll lagna chahiye na. School ki yaad to aani chahiye. Okay. No, no. I'm not sure if you. No, no. आप ये उठा दीजिए मैं. ठीक है. Okay. There's. Uh, I think your favorite cake also because I think. So the cake I should have after so my blood sugar doesn't spike. Ah, okay. No, that's the way. Always I have your. If you're having sugar, have it not in an empty stomach. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's not a pick, like I used to have my cake at 4 o'clock in the afternoon in an empty stomach. Now I don't. Yeah. I feel like I should offer you something as No, well. no, I'm good. I actually stopped desserts uh, four years back. This is the part I usually save for my daughter. <laughs> this is what she likes. I feel like I'm betraying her. Yes, don't keep up. Many will. <laughs> <laughs> what does she get in Dabba? She, um, her favourites are probably, she wants, her favourite thing in the world is a marshmallow. Which is apparently like really not good for you. Um, which of course she's not allowed to have all the time, but once in a while. But she'll either have like a peanut butter sandwich or she'll have uh, lunches in school. School oh, lunch. Th th that's a good thing. There's a good nutritionist, a parent, a school parent actually, who does the school lunch. That's very good. Um, so they do a good lunch. Mm, and she's whatever. She has a choice of vegetarian, non-vegetarian. And she, she has to eat that. So it's important for her also to try different flavors. 
different spice levels, get accustomed to it. I need something that you may or may not like the taste of or be accustomed to. And then two snacks are sent. Mm, there'll be some kind of dry fruit or uh, sandwich or thepla or, you know, hundreds of things. The good part I realized is actually, mm, they eat at home. They eat at home. Like when, yeah, when he, my son was in daycare, because both of us were working, <coughs> there was the, just to prep everything. Also, they eat at home. They eat at home. They eat at home. They eat at home. Now, like, it's so funny, just last week, he was so angry with us because apparently he got something in Dumbar that he didn't like. He made a list <laughs> of all the things that can be prepared from Monday to Friday. But that's great. Uh, because he has two breaks. And he wrote down stuff and he said, okay, how many done? I said five, but you need to give us some options. Then he went to 10. Then he eventually went to 20. He said, that's enough. Uh. Your entire month is sorted. Four weeks, five days, two meals. You can circulate between these. And Saturday, I want only this. And Sunday, I will only have this. Like his Saturday, Sunday is very special because it's yeah. not routine. Right? Yes, exactly. So uh, my wife has to make the poha yeah. on a Saturday. And my mom has to make the... Like I was born in Bangalore. My parents uh, went there about 15 years. So he makes lovely South Indian food. Oh, nice. Idli sambar that dadi has to make. Like, you know, oh, it's nice. like... Even Inaya loves idli and dosa. So, he wrote it. That you have to follow this and you have to give it options. But that is great also to yeah, take yeah. that initiative. Yeah, yeah. I have told him that. Because otherwise you will say, what do you want, what do you want, and then when you come, you like, I don't want this. Yeah. Well, I realized that, you know, it's like good for you. Then you write it. Yes. Now write it. Yes. And in the future, I will tell you. In the future, I will tell you. You can also tell me about your own food. Yeah, that I really <laughs> doubt. I mean, I've tried to, at least cutting is done. Yeah. Um, at least he cuts his own strawberry. I mean, I make really good rotis. Huh? She makes really good rotis. Oh, very cool. Yeah. But you're okay to like... That someone helps her with okay. on the tawa, but she does like with a tongue, with a tongue. she Achha. could do that also a little bit. And But I'm saying in terms of the mixing the atta and rolling it and get the, the, the tough thing is rolling it also and getting that circle. She does that really well and a little bit. That it's way. actually a very therapeutic thing I realized to do it's cooking. I never cooked till it's recently. Uh, and when my wife started telling me I that you I know nothing about cooking. So I'm just going, yes, yes, I yeah. know nothing. <laughs> no, no, you not should. It it's actually... Uh, it hasn't this, happened till now, it's not happening. Uh, fair enough. I, I didn't because as, as I said, my wife was like, he needs to see you cook so that he also gets that boys can also cook, huh. right? Or boys should also cook. So I'm showing Inaya that not all women are interested in cooking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing it for her. <laughs> uh, interesting, I just realized that he loves his yellow dal so much that he actually mixes it well, like all the masala and all. Yeah. Uh, because that's also, I mean, for a nuclear family, it's uh, it's me time, right? Like, like, TV dekh na hai, nahi dekh sakte, padhai nahi karni hai. Correct. I'm bored, so sometimes cooking in the kitchen becomes an engagement activity as well. Lovely. Uh, so it was fabulous having you over. Thank you. Uh, thank you for spending the time and actually realize that you have lovely taste in uh, food as well. I just... <laughs> <laughs> no, this is uh, very good. Yeah I, yeah, I didn't know. I've not come here this often. Yeah. But uh, I think the requisitions were such that I think I thought I'll, I mean I was hoping that you would offer. So uh, of course I will. I'm well brought up. I was hoping you will say no, and I'll just eat all of it, <laughs> as you should. <laughs> no, it was lovely having you over and fabulous, fabulous having this conversation. Thank you so I much. I think we are quite confident that, I think the myriad of topics that we discussed. Yes. Uh, and I know you've been very vocal about parenting uh, in the past. But I think we got to see a very different aspect of uh, a Soa who's also a little vulnerable, a Soa who's yeah. also reflective. Yes. about uh, her choices that she's made in the last four or five years. And uh, as you rightly said, I love the word work in progress. Yes, absolutely. Um, and we hope that this episode is also helpful to bring back the joy to parenting for all of us today. Thank you. Hi there. If you enjoyed watching the show, then please do subscribe to Tiffin Break on YouTube and Instagram to watch more such content. And if you want to be notified of the next episode, please do press the bell icon on the screen.